the other gods followed the souls again. Everybody recording. Those gods, and so the question came up: Is it possible to find a way of identi- to, uh, to identify personality types with each of these gods? And Arthur said, "Hey, I think I have a way of proceeding that might be able to help." Hmm. That I did. And therefore. You're turning the chalk over to Arthur. All right. Chalk to Arthur. Let me just make get get these. Now, hold quotes. on, Barbara. Any points? No, no. I just haven't recorded these sure. two questions before he. Yes, yeah, go right ahead. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. And we, you jumped in before we, before I got it. Normal. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to go back over what you just said. <laughs> And it's not. <laughs> Very good. I have a front of the board to go my, with it. That's my cheat sheet. I have one too, and I think you'll like it. We'll go with that. Here's an interesting little process. Babylonians are very intrigued with the process, and that process itself developed a puzzle for them, and they needed to figure out why that puzzle did what it did. And so here you have the very first process, that there are four elements. As you can see, all based on six. The Babylonians love six. Six and ten. Everything was sixes and tens. But this created a puzzle because we had fire, we had earth, we had air, and we had water. And these were the four basic elements. Now, things that were associated with fire. Those are eight sided. Where's the six come in? To six. Huh? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh. Eight. Eight. Ah, good for you. <laughs> anyway, they have these they have these processes. They have these processes. At any rate, there was the fire element, and anything with fire would charge after things. It would have energy and force. But it needed something to derive that energy and force from. So fire burnt wood. It used the process. Air only could be seen in the wind. So that was sort of in the mental processing. So we saw the processes of the mental through the air. People who had that process were harder to define. The earth people were like water. Uh, The earth people were like the stones and the rocks we would see just sitting there. And we all identify with the stones and the rocks. They don't move. The water needs a course. So the course were therefore people who were water element they need to follow a course. So consequently, if you were associated with a water (coughs) concept, what you would be is a course follower. You would needed rules, guides, and regulations. If you were an earth person, you just did what you did, and when you did it, it was final. You stopped. If you're a fire person, you charge forth. So here you have the four basic elements that we started out with with our eight sided figure. We have fire, earth, air, and water. Okay? Right. Very early on, we found out that this whole blackboard could represent what is, the one. Can't relate anything to it. However, somewhere along the one emerges Uranus. And with this little guy, Uranus, I'm going to use symbology here. With Uranus, we come out of that energy, comes forth into... Kronos. Kronos is status. It's very quiescent. In that quiescence emerges the next thing, 
Zeus, as we've learned here so far. From Zeus, he has a, a usia, where he comes in on himself, and in doing so, he creates the entire universe. This far we have. So, we know that Uranus comes out of all of this. Gives rise to the quiescent, which doesn't move. Which in turn gives rise to that which does. See? He then creates the entire universe. But in that universe lies A and the B side. In other words, it's divided. Remember that part? So we come out of the division, and because there's a division, there also has to be a second division. So now we have creation, and creation now just floats. In order to play handball, we need a wall. Otherwise, the ball just goes. So somewhere in this aspect of creation, what we developed here was a form of energy that allowed the creation to hit against itself in a way. And in doing so, we then step forth into the lower aspects of that creation. That was called the energy factor, and that energy was based on those four principles. The energy then becomes involved in the life form and what's happening in the life form itself. The life form now looks about, and it becomes enamored. And it becomes enamored in such a way that it gets caught up in the life form. So the force of the soul comes into the universe, and the universe takes a form. That form gets all caught up and the aspects of love, enjoyment, the fun, the games, just gets all tied up in what it's doing. Now the soul is entrapped. We're going to call that soul the symbol. I'll show you why these symbols in a minute. Once it's entrapped in the aspects of pleasure, it loses sight of these other higher positions that it would like to find itself going back to. It comes here to sin, as we spoke before. So within this aspect, it has to come a time where one realizes that there's more to what's going on than just this process. This is where we start finding ourselves working towards some form of identity. So far, we're with me? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sort of. Oh, we'll get more. So then, we have these factors that come out of here. We have the, cre the quiescence or contraction. We have the motion or expansion. From that, we get the expansion in form, and from that, we get the enjoyment of that form of expansion. These are the symbols that would represent that. What are the symbols? They're one of these or a combination of these four points. You'll notice that the symbol of activity breaks through the cross of quiescence. And with it, it puts the soul below that point. So here we have the material world over the soul. When we look at this symbol, notice we use the same thing, activity and quiescence, but we put the soul equal to it. Here we take the concept of spirit and we put the axis <coughs> on the uh, material world again. When we go to the love sequence, that which we enjoy and do and how we work with our lives and all the stuff we love, notice we put the soul above the earth symbol. So this represents the earth, the cross. Of course, everybody knows all about this guy. That was a symbol. 
the quiescent and the active. So here we have the, the, the Earth's principle above the soul of the spirit, and we have the spirit above the principle. Now comes a new set. Remember at one point, we examined the part that all it is brings down to the soul. And in that little bit, a point where, the, where our little guy lives, I have a point where all it is is met with reason. Reason becomes the soul point, doesn't it? And within that aspect, we're going to take this little concept right here, that little piece of that smile, and we're going to add that to them. So now we have spirit and soul over matter with reason or intelligence. From those, we get one more point. The duality of the soul at its center and the soul as it increases and decreases of the moon. Here you then have the seven astrological symbols that emerged. All right? This is pre-Hellene, but it started to fall forth during the Hellenistic period. Now, where do we take that? Well, the interesting aspect of this now is we now have principles by which we can associate a soul pattern. We have those who are serious. We have those who have wisdom. We have those who have form and energy. We have those who reflect love. And we have those that reflect reason and intelligence to bring us back to the emotional point of God itself. to come back to God in return. The sun is our bright light. So this is the point of where we try to feel our own sense of unity within ourselves through one of those principles. We'll all identify with one of these seven principles. And this is the identity that we're talking about a little earlier. Astrology, astrologos, was developed as a mental system. When kids like us went to school, we needed a way to remember. Instead of writing everything down like we do today, we were given a way and a process by which we could have a mnemonic system, that which we think by. Most of the mnemonic systems were like a house. We'd be asked to, in our mind, think of a house. And when we were told something, we would then take what we had just learned and go to our mental room and place it there. And that way we could have a mnemonic system and go to any place in that house that was associated with what we just learned and bring that forth in memory. That was our way of working. Well, astrology did kind of the same thing. It was a mnemonic system. From there it started to develop to other other areas of life. <clears throat> but basically, as a memory system, you could go anywhere along these lines. If you learn something really serious, you can associate it here in that room. If there was wisdom involved, or there was enlightenment and learning, you could use this. If there were forms involved, wrestling, uh, bodybuilding, what have you, you could use this form. There's a love you could associate, you see? So you could use these for associating different areas in our life. And this is what we did back when. Okay. So that's the groundwork of where we want to take this next step. You remember that each of these gods, because each of these are gods now, each of these gods rides a chariot. And as a god, it has two points. 
we have the wings of our chariot. And what they did, uh, the Hellenes that produced here, was an ingenious system. And uh, actually it was really brilliant when you think about it. Because the sun and moon were the gods of day and night, they only retained one point. But you'll notice that these other gods had their wings. And these wings had to be identified. They had to have some kind of a formulation in order for us to take, uh, uh, in order for us to work this through, in order to see how this plays through. So what they did is they invented a series of uh, places in the world, events in the world that we may associate with. For instance, we take first of all our personality. Second of all, all personalities, all people, aim for one thing, ease. So the next thing we do is what could we acquire in our life to develop ease? So then we'd want to do acquisitions. The next thing we'd want to go for is where do we live? Where's the area? What's the, what's the general consensus of, of our, of our uh, let's say our immediate area? So we call that the neighborhood. Next, of course, we all have a home. We all have a base of operations. So we do that. After that, we need fun. We have fun. That's, that's an area in our life that we have. We have fun. So we're going to have fun. Now there's a part in our life where we have absolutely no control of anything. We just get sick, get ill, problems happen, we get banged, we get bumped, things go on. So we're going to call this just old illness. In our processes too, we love to be married, we love to have a partner. So we need a partner, don't we? So we go out in our life and we look for partners. All this is said and done, guess what? Somewhere up the line, we all drop dead. So they put dead in the list too. Then one said, wait a minute, wait, wait, whoa, whoa. Where's God? <laughs> okay, well, let's put God in here. Need God. We've got all of these things, but what about friends? Don't we have friends? Oh yeah, wait, let's have some friends. Now, how many of you have actually prepared for something and got it all ready to go and literally goofed it up, shot yourself in the foot, so to speak, stepped on your own tongue or whatever it was, you had all ready to go, but you goof it up? Well, we have to have that too. So we're going to call that a goof place. So right here, we have just pretty much covered humanity's essence in a way. Now, our trick is to take humanity's essence and see how we can make this into a strong mnemonic device and make this work. And this is what the Hellenes came up with. Brilliant. They gave, let's number, let's number these. Should have 12 somewhere around here. Why don't I have 12? Personality acquisitions, they will be fun. Fun, illness, partnership, and dead. God. Ah, no, wait. We're going to change that just a little bit. Sorry. We all have goals in our life. That's what I was missing. If we need to achieve something. Then we need our friends. And then, of course, there's where we goof. Okay, so they number these up, and they did it that way. And they said, now what are we going to do with this? There's got to be something we can do with this. And so they decided to do it this way. They gave personality to Mars, one. They also gave death to that, because if, actually if you're going to be a person and you associate with warriors, you're going to end up dying. So let's just put that one in two. As warriors do this, 
they don't get to stay around long. All right, so we got that out of the way. What else can we do? I know what we can do because this is an expanding point. We'll give that two, and because it relates to God, we'll give it nine. We're going to associate here, aren't we? Okay, we got that. Okay, now, what about goals? Well, we need goals, so we're going to give that number 10. And we always want our friends to be long-lasting, so we're going to give that number 11. Now, we need partners. We're going to give that to this guy, love, because we know love is good, and we know fun is good. So partners and fun is good. We need reasoning. We need to be able to think through things, so we give that to neighborhood that's going to be number three. And because we don't really know when all of this stuff comes about here, we'll give that number six. That leaves this one. We're going to give that four. And last but least, I have to assign this on to something. So here we have basically a system that you could put any one of these things together. You see? It just flows into the match. All right. So is God returned a goof? <laughs> God's kind of a goof. Yeah, if you have plans, pray to God about them. See who laughs first. So we're going to give going to give that a little bit to God and go from there. So he gets, he gets a lot of things. So these are the house factors that we want to play with along the idea. This then became the sublunar world. I believe we call it a different name in our last dissertation. This we call the celestial. But these are the gods. How in the world can we do this? We have the sublunar world. We have the gods, but we don't have too much on the celestial. Huh. Why don't we do this? Why don't we do this? Let's call this Capricorn. Call that Aquarius. Let's call this guy Taurus and this guy O oh, Sagittarius. Why don't we call this guy Aries and maybe Scorpio? This guy we'll call Libra because that's nice about partnerships. And we'll call this guy here fine. Oh, fun. And maybe name it Leo. We'll call this the house of brothers, sisters in the neighborhood. So we name that Gemini because it's always backing around. And we'll call this Virgo because Virgos are the scientists that like to think about healings and what goes on from there. So we'll give it that. And we go on from there. See? So now we have now developed a celestial form. See? We have all the ingredients for a perfect mnemonic device. We come along, anything you need to know. You can place in any of that category. And as somebody talks along, you know, yeah, it goes here. Well, it goes over here. And you just place it where you need to have it placed. Very simple. It just takes a little bit of memorization. But as you can see, there are elements here. There's really not a lot of them either. Very, very simple. It boils it down to a very small little nut that everything can fit in. Now if I talk about likeness, well, here's two things here. I've got a likeness. Oh, look at this right here. This is a likeness. See, I can start categorizing likeness. But how do I now categorize the unlike? Where do we go to the opposite end of that? I have to have an unlikeness. Hmm. What am I going to do? An idea. Why don't we put this in a huge circle? And wherever something here is, personality is one, why don't we take over here the complement of a personality and call that its opposite. Man, female, or female, male. We have, now we have a complement. So in each of these circumstances, we develop complements. And these complements will work with one another or against one another under this factor. How does that look? Huh? It just so happened to have something that looks. Mm. 
we have here the exact model for what we were just talking about. Here with that exact model, going to give us an idea of how each of these aspects work with one another. What you have here is opposed here. So any place of these oppositions give us some kind of a balance with what we just talked about. Now remember we have the celestial and we have the subcelestial. And the subcelestial travels inside <coughs> celestial, doesn't it? So here we have the sun, and right here, we'll notice that it just revolves around in a 24-hour period very nicely, like that. This is how this works. So I can say about anything I want to, and put it in any one of these house placements, any one of these apartments, and relate it. So if I need to know about, say, this particular association, I can make a memory device out of it and move that to say, oh, this represents, when we said four, it represented some kind of home base. Well, I need a partner. That's a strong home base. See? That's how I remember that. Look at that. Partner with a home base. I met John the other day, and he has a nice wife. She supplied him a home. So he acquired a home in his partnership from himself. So he and his opposite, the partner, developed a nice home. That's how I would remember that. You see? Nothing to do with anything else but that particular process. Here lies the whole idea of the celestial, the subcelestial, and the only way you can take two things and join them together is with a third. There's your triad, and here they come, the gods. They take the celestial, take the home of the, where the stars are, which of course we name different kind of categories, constellations, signs now. And we associate them with the mundane houses, the, all the departments of life that we have here. And we associate them. And I can make any association I want from any position in this 12-wheel circumstance, because I have every element I need. Now, here's the fun part. If I know about this circumstance, this is then the essence of itself. So here we have the highest hierarchy, back to your hierarchy, is within its own essence. Something within its own essence is what it is. There's no movement from it. It's pure, it's simple, it's good, it's, it's wonderful. It's its own essence. But, because the gods can move about anywhere they want to, they can shift their essence. So if we take the god, the moon, and put it here where the illness is, you see, it's just moved out of essence and shifted itself. It's made, it's made a different approach to things. So now I have ways of balancing the power of each of these gods by putting it in a different circumstance. Here, if I put it in its opposite sign, it's in its lowest place. Each god then can come here on Earth, send away all it wants to. It can go in any department it chooses. It can be as great as it can possibly be. It can be as weak as it can possibly get. We have a circumstance where the planets then, our gods, have 12 different ways of playing 12 different departments, which if you turn this whole department system around, you'll have 1,008 ways to develop each one of these places once you start learning all the facts of how they play in and out of themselves. Go. Sorry, I'm very lost. Go. Uh, what's the purpose of this entire system? This is the association that we ourselves make. This is just, I'm just showing you how the memory system was working. For what purpose, though? Why is memory, memory. any of this? Yeah, just a memory. Well, now the any is, 
there were the seven, I guess we, we talked about it. We, I'm not too clear on that too, but my understanding is that you have the one, it produces the many, and the many come from the first seven from the one. So you get the one. For some reason, it just breaks rank, and suddenly there's seven. It's a puzzle. I've not, not, not figured that one out. Yes? I see a huge parallel between what you're talking about and hermetics. Like, um, in the beginning, when you talked about the three, it was totally reminding me of like the tree of life and the Kabbalah and all that stuff. Yeah. It's, you're, it's like almost you're alluding to that. It is. They're all associated. Because if we took astrology away, what if it didn't exist? How would we place this mnemonic system somewhere else? Well, then there'd be another there'd be another device of some kind. Her hermetic Kabbalah and how you're interpreting astrology is, is actually kind of fairly recent. I didn't say astrology. This is astrologus. This is a way of thinking, a way of remembering. Yeah, but it's based... What you're looking at here is based on the ancient's perception of the physical rotation of the heavens and the planets. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah, that's symbolic. That's not really talking about the physical planets because planets aren't infinite in their positions and they're not eternally going to be rotating how they're rotating. It's always changing its dynamics. As far as today goes, yes they are. Yeah. I have to, I have to go with that. Mm -hmm. So I have to do what's and going on right pole, now. I know ship. later, actually 500 million years from now, we probably won't even have a planet Earth yeah. or Sun. That's, that's what kind of weakens your argument about how this is an internal system of symbols. No, oh, our internal system of symbols here is to communicate right now. 500 million years from now, we won't be communicating. Maybe do something else. Yeah. Maybe we just do the spot. But it's a system based on what the ancients perceived from physical events. Yeah, absolutely. Because there are, there are 12 departments in life that basically fall together. There are these things that the world seems just to simply reflect. And they have a basis connection, a base connectivity to these gods, the Aeneid. But would you say that somehow their use of these symbols that aren't eternal but static is kind of a flaw of that system? Why? Because it was... Like, the positions on these charts you have are based on the positions of the stars and the planets at a certain specific time when it was formulated, which has no relation at all to how the planets and the polar shift are today. All right, here's, 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 this now becomes the problem of astrology. Yeah. And a lot of people do this, and I don't know why. What's your sun sign, by the way? I'm an Aries. Oh, I'll be damned. Okay. First of all, these represent specific energy patterns that we know about ourselves. We know these things. You know when you're in love, you know when you're emotional, you know when you're overwrought. But if astrology, if this didn't exist, they, the ancients, our ancestors, would have probably just chosen another set of symbols to use yeah. instead of these. Absolutely. <clears throat> it would have. Because this wouldn't have existed, how can you use it? Like It'd the, have to be something more elements. Yeah, but they use the elements. And each of these yeah. elements have a reflection on these. So that's another but way it's of... it's not literally fire, not, it's not literally earth, it's not literally air, it's not literally water. Because there's more elements than four, there's the periodic table. <laughs> yeah, those are sub-elements. Yeah. Sub We're going with the basic mnemonic system during the Hellenistic period. I don't think they had the table then, did they? No. no but Enlighten to, me here. To remember what? Yeah, to remember what? What are you remembering? We're remembering the basic inner structure of the soul. This is what we remember. In those 12 categories. This is how we remember, by you could use understanding the or soul symbols point. to categorize the soul. You can use the Kabbalah, you can use this. Yeah. You can use the, the, the I Ching. Yeah. I Ching is beautiful, by the way. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Uh, so is there, there was something in the Phaedrus that I remember of, uh, it sort of implied a... Uh, it implied a, a kind of uh, astrology, or at least there was some reference to there being um, certain months and uh, and different personalities. There's gods that went along with that. Do you have any uh, any idea which would be which? Like, for instance, in the laws, there is... Um, no, but in terms of Greek gods, which go with which? Uh, in the laws, for instance, there's a 
something said about celebrating death in December. Is that is that? So that's an hour, yeah. yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah. We, yeah, we can do that. Okay. Sorry, are you passing out? No, but I'll give you something if you want it. Yeah. Especially if it'll help you remember something that's important. Uh, well, thank you. All I'm saying at this point in time is that the Hellenistic period developed a system of thought, and that thinking was based on these forms of uh, categorizing. These are just categories. What happened over the years is there started becoming an idea that maybe we can foretell the future with this because of what you just said earlier. When these things change, they show us a different form. And because they show a different form, maybe that form has something to tell us. Now, good astrologers today always say we talk to the angels because these seven people will put it together in such a way. It's brilliant. It really is. So when we look at this, what happens is basically this. We have Mars likes to talk to us about that. We have Venus who likes to talk to us here. We have Mercury that will relate to this. We have the Moon that will relate to here. The Sun relates to here. Again, Mercury relates to here. Venus relates to this. And we have Mars again. And we have Jupiter. Saturn. Saturn. Jupiter. All right? If you'll notice, Saturn is two houses here. And then we spread it out to Jupiter's next, then Mars is next, then Venus, then Mercury, and then the Sun and the Moon. So you see, here we have Saturn right here, Capricorn and Aquarius have their two wings, so to speak. And one wing or two wings can stay intact or they can do, deteriorate. That was the form of how to know if they were de deteriorating, you see? So this system is only a system of thought and memory patterns, nothing more. It deteriorated into what today you read about your sun sign. That's what it's about. Aries, wow, go get her, kick-ass guy, man, I'll tell you it's Aries going to do it's right, right? Do you? You go out there and fight all the time and see who can kill next? They're described so vaguely they can apply to anyone. Yeah, you can they read, can. You can read the opposite of your horoscope and oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. Oh, oh yes, yeah, Randy. Yeah, uh, those are not horoscopes. Those are psychological profiles. There's a huge difference between that and this. This is just a memory system. We're not even astrology yet. Probably won't even get there. Yeah. Okay, in your in your gods, you have the love symbol or Venus is love. Right. She puts, she puts the spirit above matter. Okay, and you, you tagged its wings. What Her are wings are actually the, the second house and the seventh house, but she's also very strongly associated with seven and five. She loves partners and she loves fun. Okay. So because that's the deal that we put, gave her seven and five. Okay, this, so let's follow it down one more. And you associated what <clears throat> astrological symbol with this? five? This no. is Mercury. No, down. We're going down. Working down. Here. That's Virgo, the scientist, yeah. and Gemini, the novelist. Is, is seven and five? The two, form, the two forms of the mind. Uh, no, that's three and six is this one. The seven and five is the Venus. So they have two yeah, forms of the mind. I'm staying in Venus. I'm staying in Venus, seven and five. Okay, what's the, what's the astrological symbol under five? Oh, this is a Leo. Sorry. Now, if it's a mnemonic device... Fun does not make me think of Leo. That's really? not how kids. Learned. Think kids. Lions? Kids. That just happens to be the period of the time. Oh. See, the reason why Leo was so popular during August, July and August was just when all the lions came out and, and started roaming the areas. That's not fun. No, it wasn't. But it's related to the period. That's more dead. Yeah, I know. I There's like a lot of flaws people. in astrology. But I'm just saying, this is how it falls together. It's a no, mnemonic we're... device. But Apparently, young no, lion cubs are fun. <laughs> so, um, 
How would I use astrologos right now? From like, specifically, what what benefits? What, what, I don't get like what if I were to study with you and get this system, then what can I do with it right now? How do we test it? It gives you a department. It gives you it gives you a memory device that allows you to place things and areas in your mind where when something is mentioned, you can make sure. an instant recollection. And it comes right back to you. And it's, it's, it's sort of food of the gods in a way because it fills you when you get it. It falls into place. I have so not studied... Of, Go ahead. Just quick, what kinds of things would you put in your mind to be able to use this? Like this well, you remember the, you remember you remember this. you remember the wheel? Okay? You remember the wheel. And with the wheel, you know that these symbols work this way. And that wheel describes these particular places. So when you talk about God to me, I'm going to automatically think about nine and Jupiter. Those are the things that come to me real quick. So anytime uh, Pierre comes up here and gives a dissertation of some kind, a lot of times he'll say something that I can associate with strongly because of the fact that it falls into one of these categories very quickly. And it just works for me because it's a memory device. And then device. does it enable you to remember or recall that later? Mm -hmm. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, because it's in the ninth house. It's God. It's a partnership of some kind. But you notice that they all have opposite points to them, and that's the other way of remembering. So you get the one, you get the many. So is, the, is there a correlation between, say, Zeus, Hera? Is there a... Leo and Aries and all of these things that, uh, well, I guess Aries is Aries, right? What about Spring. Zeus? Who is Zeus of the ones that I'm familiar with uh, as far as like uh, Gemini, Leo, and this kind of thing? Is there a Zeus? Zeus is Pisces, and he'd also be associated with uh, Sagittarius. So Zeus is Pisces. What about Hera? Is it just what does it say there? It should have a number, a symbol there. Okay, it's it's the uh, little moon, uh, soul and the moon, and the uh, and the uh, <coughs> cross with the circle on the top. This one here. This one. Um, this that, one. The one without the reason on the top. So the one in between. Venus. Yes. Venus. Okay. So it's love. So you're talking about emotions and love. Okay, so so it's not necessarily okay. And Aphrodite would also be. Mm -hmm. Venus as well, then, or not? You have to remember that all of this evolved over a period of time. I'm trying to give you so a there's quick not a overview. One, one I could have picked just one and just gone with that, which I probably, probably should have. But I wanted to give you a, a quick overview of how these things emerged. Now, what happens is every one of you in here is going to associate with one of these gods, which was now the question that we raised before I got up here. How do we associate with this? Some of you are going to be real serious about your work, and you're going to associate with Saturn. That's your god. This is your associative god. You're going to stay with that. You're going to think about caution. You're going to be very cautious about things. You're going to think in terms of where you're safe, serious, secure. It's very important. And that's who you'll associate with. That's your god. That's the god you'll associate with from the end. If you fail your wars and have all the wisdom, <coughs> By the way, just for your information, I did somebody's chart. This particular point is exemplified so many times in this person's chart. It's amazing. I mean, really amazing. So you look at that, you hear the person speak, you go, oh, yeah. And that's who you'd associate that person with. Somebody comes in here and is always belligerent, has a lot of problems, and needs to push us around and push the thing like me. Well, they like oh come on. They like that guy right there. They want Mars. They want to fight and argue. Get a good go. Get a good robust. But somebody comes in here with all huggy poos. Just feels good about life. Wants to draw pictures and play music. And they're going to be in the love mode. They're going to associate with this god. Go. See the huggy poo over there. There's a huggy poo. She associates with huggy poo. Damn. <laughs> we have a honey poo. Now we have people who have an incredible amount of intelligence. They can give you numbers, figures, facts, and things. Bang! They're going to associate 
with this guy right here. This is their god, Mercury. So they like Hermes. Go. Would you say that there's a basic relativism that's behind this whole system of thought? What would you say? It seems to me that that's the case. Yeah. Because I expect, like, I hope that you were going to say when I said, "What is it? What are we supposed to remember?" Like, by doing this system would help us to remember God. But then you referred to the system itself as what we would be remembering, or using the system to remember other things, yeah. or basically classify different types. This of is a classification system. Exactly. However. <clears throat> But doesn't that make it... I can't say that you're going to know this and know God. That I can't know. Unmeaningful? That won't happen. But you will certainly get some meaningful circumstances about life that will allow you to look at things and go, yeah, of course. Yeah. It's, it's good for acceptance. <laughs> and of course, if you have people who are soulful, they'll be under this particular God. They'll like Selene a lot. Go ahead. Are you familiar with Plato's Divided Line Art? No. See, that's my problem. I'm not familiar with this at all. That's why I'm here. There's levels. There's... Opinions, images, understanding, knowledge, yeah. and this is locked in the image realm. Well, very much so. There's still two realms above yeah. that. Yeah, very much so. And of course, we know this guy here, the sun, who <laughs> thinks he's God. We'll always stand up and just start talking about anything and telling you how important we are and wonder why you don't think so, but we got it. And when you see these, when you see each of these symbols in each person, when you have it in the back of your mind, You'll see people, and they'll talk to you for five or six minutes, and in the back of your mind, yeah, you kind of fit that. Now, you may be wrong, but chances are you're right, and what will happen is you've got a way of putting these people, everybody you meet will go into this particular circumstance. Now, when you get Alzheimer's, all bets are off, yeah, or dementia, all the bets are off, but go ahead. Arthur, I think it's amazing as a memory system. I was wondering about it's, it's like leading you through the train of gods like we read about in the Phaedrus and drawing you upward, does it have that anagogic aspect to it? Does it, like, does it call you to reflect on the Logos? Like, constantly, you know, and constantly. That, that seems to me then you're, you'd be attributing more than relativism to it, but as... Does, it goes a lot deeper, yeah, but... As a guidance to different states of mind, you yeah. know, or... Yes, because each of these is a state of mind. But every one of them lead us back to the same place. When I look at an astrology chart, the first thing I want to look at is, where is your path home? Because everywhere a planet is placed within this circumstance tells a story, and that story says, I'm on my way home. No matter how you go there, you're on your way home. But that's, that's, the, that's, that's the religious aspect of it, and that's where it got rather despoiled, you might say. After Is, about 15. Are they hand in hand, though? Yeah. Like, this can be a religion. It certainly can be. Every bit of it. But when you understand, what, remember the old know thyself? Cross that, Parthenia? Okay. This is, what, this is where it was based. This is why they learned this. So the Hellenes could learn a system of thought where they could put it together and then work from there. And I haven't had enough experience yet with Pierre to go through these in the way you'd probably like him to answer this, because I'm a novice here. But the man I studied under, my grandfather, used a French astrologer named J.B. Moran, who studied all of these uh, dialogues, and in that study became one of the best astrologers that ever hit the world. And he was exactly in the same place Proclus was. He put it all together too late. <laughs> he died off and nobody even saw his works except for the few of us. So all this is a process. <coughs> that process is how we associate with that Aeneid God and how we work it. That's probably a Saturn guy right there. Look at him. Serious as can be. Man. No, I'm a huggy poop. Oh, I know you're <laughs> busy, but that mind process. Anyway, this brings me now to a, to a point where I'd like to introduce... Lyndon, to ask you some questions about one of the ways to use this, because right. he does he does excellent on this. So, Lyndon, would you come up and <laughs> turn this over or turn it around? What do you want? Do you want me to erase it, move it, no, you, you swing can it? Leave it that. We'll, we'll turn it around. We're going to turn this around. You ready? Uh, essentially, as he said, this is a mnemonic. It's a mental device for classifying knowledge and as we you know studied you know in 
one of the dialogues about the criticism of the pharaoh to Thoth, saying that writing may not be very good for our mind because we don't remember as much. We don't think as much. Okay, and this, these symbols, although they're writing in a certain sense, they press us as was earlier discussed by Arthur to remember things. Now, also, our trines. Each of these, and we have ten planets, and I'm not going to go into that, but one of the things that's very clear is that in the early days of astrology, the septenary, which is seven, was what was used. Okay, and these are the visible planets that the ancients could see, the wanderers. And the 12 characteristics that are talked about in the Platonic dialogues are associated not with the wanderers, but with the signs. Each of the signs had an esoteric and a spiritual teachings associated with it. So when you went, if you've read Iamblichus and the initiatory writings where he describes what happens to an initiate, this is what they were taught. This symbolism, so that they did not need books. They did not need, you know, references. They only needed their own mind to figure out what any particular situation required. And for me, these are all states of consciousness that have a trinity associated with them. That's why I put them in a trine. They're states of consciousness, which is another way of talking about the relationship to deities. When all of these states of consciousness in our soul are feasting on the meadow at the highest level, this, you know, is the harmony of the spheres, spheres that um, the early Pythagoreans were talking about. These are also associated with this, the uh, octave, with the seven colors in the spectrum. Nature is full of the septenary. And they all have likenesses and unlikenesses. As an example, just to give you know, a single one, Venus is associated in some systems with yellow. It's also associated in some systems you know, with a jewel or a uh, plant. And what the people were doing is associating with this vibration Especially Proclus. Proclus talks about this, you know, in many ways because of the thergy. You know what thergy is? What's that? The waving magic. Theurgy. 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 Okay. They weren't doing this, you know, to, uh, as we moderns, you know, think about it, to control the universe. They were doing these ceremonies to shift their attention with colors, with plants, with perfumes, with gems, to that state of consciousness in its highest level. In essence, it was a practical um, pointer. One of the problems with Mo, for me at least, in most mystical writings, you have no pointers. Someone says, oh, we got a state of consciousness, and you know, what state of consciousness? Where do we start from? What's our basis? Well, for Venus, it's love. We all, as human beings, know what love is and what it isn't. We all know, you know, what thought is and what it isn't. We all know what nurturing is, which is our lunar energy. We all know what power is, which is the sun. We all know what selfishness and system are all about, which is Saturn. 
We all know what aggression is, which is Mars. We all know, you know, what religious thoughts are about. Jupiter. And they represent the base level that we can identify with in our minds to begin to understand where we're going. Does that make sense? No. Um, what's the third and the fifth one? Meaning, do we understand you? I think that is what you're meaning. Yeah. Yes. What's the third and the fifth one? The moon? Which third? Uh, third from the left. This one? Yeah. Moon. Moon. No, no, I know what a moon is, but love, thought. I got love, thought, and then okay. nurturing. 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 Right. Nurturing, you know. What is the moon, you know, rule in astrology? It rules cancer. And it rules, you know, the breasts and women. I like those. Yeah, that's nurturing. <laughs> the moon. Uh huh. Breast cancer. Sorry. <laughs> but also, it's it's the instinct, you know, for nurturing things. Males can have a have a moon. They nurture things. You know, it might be a three oh six that they oil every week, but they nurture it. Yeah. So if someone has a, uh, I mean. If someone were to have, say, a nurturing sign on top of a nurturing aren't there multiples like a, a solar, lunar, there's all kinds of signs and they can kind of compound, right? You don't just have the one whenever with the day you were born, there's also the time and things like that, right? Don't, don't get tied up with the chart. Okay. Okay. All right, well then let me ask we're, we're the question. We're trying, both Arthur and myself, what we're trying to do is stay in relationship to the kinds of metaphysics that we are discussing here. Okay. Okay. Uh, the quite only question I was going to ask then uh, was uh, was if this had any connection to what the Greeks called as far as as fate versus destiny. That can you can you sort of determine a track that someone is on that maybe they have to break out of? Correct. Or the tyrant. When you understand astrology. You understand both. Well, if that's the case, then when they're when they're a tyrant, and they maybe do under, come to understandings, it, does their constellation change? No. So it's, it's just permanent. a transformation of that base state of consciousness to its higher state. Remember, it's pointing upward. Here's the tyrant. So it's a predetermined constellation? Not a constellation. Or in your... A state of consciousness in your soul. This, okay. is a, this is a mnemonic for a state. Okay? And what it tells you, once you learn in your soul what the tyrant feels like and what the guardian feels like, you can always associate it with this symbol. Okay. Well, I guess I'm asking a different kind of question because okay. you have these astrological charts. Once Is again, that different? I don't want to get into the technical side of this. Both Arthur and I are trying to stay at the level that Pierre is discussing. All right. Okay, when you start getting in that, you know, there are technical issues that I can discuss privately with you, but they're a problem because it's like the shadows in the bottom of the cave. All right. Astrology and the horoscopes become shadows. They are not part of the upper world, and that's where we're trying to keep this discussion is in as close as possible to the upper world. Yeah. I'm really interested in what you're mentioning here. <clears throat> Each of us has a symbol that we're born into. Mm -hmm. Determined, I don't know how. We have all of these. Every one of us has all of these. And then we function at different times under those states of consciousness. And That's correct. Through the mnemonic system, we can come to learn to read that correct. and understand the path reading, that it takes us. Reading on. our soul. If we're doing Mercury energy, once we learn Mercury energy, that state of consciousness, then if we want to engage it in its highest level, then, you know, we have a mnemonic that can start our mind in that direction. Okay, we'll do you, and then I'll... 
I just wanted to know if you uh, knew any more. That I liked the Guardian Tyrant contrast. Mm -hmm. What are the uh, what are some others? Uh, like, what would the spiritual one be that you associate? Here's with the them? oligarch. Money, greed. And what's the positive? Uh, think about it for a minute. <clears throat> when the guardians are trained, what must they do? Guard. No, no. Personal... Internally, with their soul. What must they learn? What's mine and To not? give up greed and... Yeah. That's right. You're going in the right direction. To give up greed and selfishness. Yeah. Temperance, justice. Because okay. they have everything in common. That's right. Mm -hmm. As soon as Saturn raises its head, greed, selfishness, possession, this is the oligarch. And this is another aspect of the oligarch, or, um, oligarchy as well, because Jupiter <coughs> is the loss of our spiritual direction. You know, it's thinking, it's conceit, thinking that we deserve something instead of earning it by directing you know, ourselves towards deity. Mm. Mars is kind of easy. We either you know, can enjoy our carnal pleasures or we can direct them towards the benefit of the community. Different kinds of love, selfish, universal. Different kinds of intellect, Selfish, Saturn again, or towards the one. All of these have their natures, both good and bad. Are you guys proposing that this was a language that they used? Yes. In, in an intelligible manner with one another? Correct. Just as Pierre was trying to talk about states of consciousness relating between systems, this at least as far as Arthur and I are concerned, is the base symbolic system that the ancients in the West and some in the East used to communicate certain ideas in literature. Alchemists, healers, astrologers, when they got to higher levels. It's a theory. Now, I... So, if I understand correctly, each one of these states of consciousness exists in every person. Correct. To varying degrees, mm -hmm. along with its opposite. Correct. That's, that's contained within each. So mm -hmm. then, under the system, the role of life is essentially to flip each one to its higher aspect. That's correct. To its higher aspect. That's correct. So then, is that essentially the goal of the work of astrology, to assist someone in actually accomplishing that? It has that, that aspect, else? yes. That was it. Is there any sense of like um, harmonics, like having them in a certain order or ratio or proportion? Yes. Cool. <laughs> hierarchy. I mean, yep, yeah, hierarchy too. Numbers. Remember, do you, do you these are all associated with numbers. Was Plato looking at that when he wrote about music in the Republic? Is that? I, I'm not sure. All I can tell you is, is that in the myth of Ur, when you see the symbolism of the turning of the spheres and the songs of the sirens on each one of those spheres, that is, you know, these folks and the signs turning in the world of time, in the universe. And symbolically, that is what happens almost, at least in my reading and understanding, uh, the idea of the anthem of creation, the music of the spheres, is our moving in consciousness to towards the light. You know, which attracts us because of its beauty, you know, and its inspiration. And as long as the dark horse, the lower sides of these parts of our nature, hold us down, the more difficult it is, you know, to raise up to, uh, you know, go in that direction. And, yeah. Um, you're, you're associating 
con you were saying that the, the ancients associated concepts. Correct. With these, with these symbols. symbols. But those symbols in and of themselves don't necessarily invoke any type of mnemonic. No. Or, or you would say that, let's say if this was an ancient book, that, it would, that, the, that would be the alphabet which would populate these books to convey symbols. That's correct. That's correct. And so, are you saying that that's what they did? They were just they were using that as an alphabet to communicate concepts. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because when a person recognizes love, that's a universal principle. But that doesn't mean people understand what love is. No, no, no. I'm just saying, you know, that here is a symbol you can use that has no language or concepts associated with that state. That's, you know, so that when you're talking about Venus, you're talking about a certain state. And once the person experiences that, and the other person as well, not in verbal communication, but in higher states, say, oh, oh, I get that. That's it. Okay, why, do, why, does it, why can't you just write love? What's the difference between writing love and using that symbol? What makes the symbol so important? Yeah. Same reason why I use the number five, or okay. write five. They both mean the same thing. You can write it or you can just write a symbol. All right, so what's the emphasis on the symbology when we develop language far past that? Identical. No. You got seven, seven letters in your alphabet. No, there's more. This is just part of it. There's 22. You got the 12 signs. You have the 10 numerals or 10 planets. I have a question for both of you. You guys come here every Friday, right? Mm -hmm. And you come to see a number of things by reading Plato. Mm -hmm. What's the most important insight that you've gotten from this symbology system that can be distinguished from what you come to see in Plato's pages? Well, basically, there are many things that Pierre will say that I can place in my mnemonic categories. And it makes it easier for me to retain basically what he's teaching us. Okay, because so none of this can happen without Usia. Okay. Nothing can happen without that. And this is the goal of every planet. It can be as strong in its perfect essence or it can be in its weakest domain. It can be one of the two. But when you recognize it, now you recognize how to cultivate it. You know how to pull a weed against the garden. And this is basically what this shows us. And this is why I came here, because of the fact that this is, I know this, but I don't know why it developed the way it did, and this is what I'm seeking. So that's, this is my quest here, is what does Pierre have to offer in the philosophy, and how can I retain that and get it here as well? Because you can only improve in life, <laughs> unless of course it's not But this to me is a form of improvement. But one of the things that he mentioned, and you brought up a good point, Well, I said to another astrologer, I just told him he's about to get into the worst situation he'd ever want to get involved in his life. Because this is love. It's in square aspect. Now, square is to devise itself. So if I'm driving down the street on this way, 100 miles an hour and somebody's driving 100 miles that way and we meet at the corner, you got the square, that's what the square signifies. Saturn, remember we talked about? There's all that wisdom. So this guy is now going to question his love and conjoin Saturn, he's going to destroy it. Because Saturn says, with Mars, we destroy. That's what Mars does. It's an energy that destroys. Unless the person understands his higher platform, his higher elevation. So, so how did you come to that? What, what method did you come to that? This? No. What you just told me. Well, you just, well you, just, you just ask, why not just write the symbols? Or write it out? But 
this has a multitude of, of processing you can work with. The squirrel will redefine it. So does Saturn. There's a multitude. When you ask about the book, and you say, well, how do I know it's an old book? That's how I know. You didn't explain anything, though. You just... You just yeah, no, only if you can read the alphabet. You need to read Okay, yeah. I understand. Do you, uh, will you be able to see what he's talking about? Yeah. After you've... After you've memorized, you know, the associate, this is kind of like poetry in a sense, in that there's so many different levels, you know, of meaning. But see, you, can, you can't even tell me, there's no, you cannot not use language to explain your symbols. Tell me the answer, please. I've been taught that that is 11. How do you know that? Um, wait, wait a minute, maybe I should do this. Just the way that I've been taught to associate adding one plus one plus one plus one plus one, whatever. It's the same thing. It's an identical mnemonic system. You can read the symbols quickly, can't you? Much more quickly than it took me to write that out. So this basically is how this is working. It's an alphabet, but the alphabet has... Okay, what makes it mnemonic? Once you remember, how did you know that? You had to learn the shorthand. You had to learn the shorthand. as well. Once you learn it, now it becomes mnemonic. Because you get, you get all the nuances. Because the symbol brings the meaning. The symbol brings with it. You get now it's two fives. Yes, is that 10 or 55? What is yeah, that? You have to have meaning first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to recognize what the meaning is. That's why I wrote all the meanings down the first time. But see, now I got another thing. Now I got two fives. So is that 16 or 61? It's like 61. Oh, okay. I like 16. Because by the time you count to four, I'm at 10. Old saying by the Pythagoras. You didn't put the appropriate symbol. Yeah. You didn't put the appropriate symbol. Exactly. Two fives. So if I, that's what I'm saying. So it's the training of the mnemonic system of the symbology. Once you acquire this, this becomes a very simple process. This, actually, this is one of the simplest ways of things to think because of the fact for each position, there's 1,008 points that you can come to. Okay, so that's a computer. It's a whole book. That's a computer. It really is, in a way. What are you computing? Pressures, uh, heights, how wide, how tall, how broad, all of that. So you're computing everything. Yeah, but I have to have a context in order to make that computation. Okay. So, um, are, are you saying that, uh, <clears throat> Lyndon, that, that each soul, this is a sort of <clears throat> map, so you speak, of, of each soul symbolically sure. with states of mind and their higher and their lower? And it works for you or it doesn't. I'm sorry, would you move the question, please? He said it was it a map of your states of soul. It's a map right? of your soul, symbolic. Yes? Yes. Yeah. It can't be a map without some kind of orientation and direction. Right. I mean, you have to hierarchically arrange them. You have mm -hmm. Yes. You have to do more than just place the symbols on a board in order to make it. In right. order to make it a map of consciousness, I think you need more than just. That's why only you, you know, can explore your soul. Nobody else can do it. Nobody else can do it for you. You're it. Remember, we said fire, earth, air, water. They all have a principal nature. So if you take, if you take the fire, the earth, the air, and the water, and you place, let's say, the thought process in fire. The thought process is faster. It's fire. If you place it in air, it's much more ethereal. It reads almost everything at once. So, so this was supposed to be the personalities of the gods. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yeah, but as we follow each one of these mm -hmm. guys, then what I'm hearing is that you can key in on these symbols as a way to perhaps correct yourself if you feel that your thoughts are in your air or your thoughts are not where you want them to be. I don't know why right. I would need a symbol for that, but I suppose 
Are you a slow it thinker? Itself, it makes itself obsolete. Are you, a, are you an earth thinker? You just itself. ponder and stay on something and not work through the system. You just think on it and think on it and think on it. See, that's an earth. It's like a rock. Rocks don't move easy. They just like you're there as rock. I'm a rock thinker. I'm a fire thinker. See. So, so then, that, then, then we are just trying. We are trying to read. Read the states of mind and their opposites, uh -huh. like like Plato is in the Republic. Like the system. See, one of the things I know about me, I have a very poor mental processing. Mm. Very poor. I learned. I grew up with eleven languages, and I never got any of them right. Honest. I just had a problem. I've always had a problem trying to communicate, and because of that, this helps. Now I know too late, but I know that I should be here learning this so I can get some kind of uh, process. That, so I can learn how to think. And this is what this is giving me. It's giving me the dialectic. So now I'm trying to uh, form the dialectic with this as well. It's Once I can do that, I hope I can give you a better example of what we've got going. Yeah. Now, are you also bringing in the idea of theurgy as a way of changing their state of consciousness? That would you know, move over to a Hindu form of... The way the yeah. Symbols, as a the idea of theurgy of is to think along a pattern. Same idea as a mantra, anything like that. You know. Well, in and, the sense of also transforming. You will spiritual. transform. We will transform. Everything moves. It's a constant move. The worst planet in the chart generally turns out to be the best because somebody recognizes they're stupid. They get out of that. Somebody recognizes that they're physically weak. They get O.J. Simpson. Had a horrible physical attribute in his chart. But look what he took with it. He worked it and worked it and worked until he murdered somebody. <laughs> Not great. It's over the top. It was, but he still did. But by the time he reached his athleticism, he was the greatest. So he really overcame a real horrible situation. We well, all do it. I'm sorry. He killed a couple of people, apparently, and then got away with it, and is no, now in jail for another crime. Yeah, and and stupid. He's done. So, so are you but we all this have. is a guy who went through some kind of ad advancement? In the physical realm. He, he advanced quite a bit into the area where he decided to become an athlete, yeah. But well, now his athlete. ego took over, and what happens? See, yeah, now it became that negative power. Lyndon brought it. I mean, there's a lot you can go with with this. There's, there's a whole lot of things. I'm planning on teaching a course of this here later on. But first of all, I want to get my dialectic in order, because there's some things I need to find out within myself about this so I can get a better example to you people later. I would like to do this again. But, you know, would you be open to the idea that once you come to a better understanding of dialectic, you might have to leave the system behind entirely? <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah. Because if I can find out that it's no good, what the hell do I want with it? <laughs> you know, it's like an old car. Don't run anymore. <laughs> or, or find out a way to make it more... Or enhance it. it yeah, yeah. that's the thing. Rational choice. Yeah, I, this is really what I'm looking for. This is why I'm sitting here. You, you have to be willing to walk away from anything. If you're going to gamble, you got to put it on the table. So you're right. You're right. However, I, I have stuff here that is really a very strong process. And once I think anybody gets to know this, you, I can look at a person's chart, and it's like a novel. <laughs> They're fascinating. Whether it's real or not, this is one of the most fascinating puzzles I've ever been involved with in my life. It is fascinating. How does it compare with the midwifery that you see? Ah, whoa! Per may I take another moment? Here's, this is the beauty. Because when I read the midwifery, it, it was like stepping, taking a first... Did you read Don Juan? Where he steps off into the blackness... And it's just exactly what happened to me. What happens is when we're born, we have a series of planets that tells us where our soul basically lies. And let's say that we have an OJ Mars, okay? I need to find out by sign what his pathologos would be and where he may have learned that by the house number. <clears throat> From who? By an aspect. 
So these three things will allow me to look at someone and talk with them. And I've used this now four times. And the results are astounding. Thank you so much. Again and again. Let's do a the, test. Let's do the one. results are astounding. This is something you have to sit. It takes a while. I mean, it's the process. But you can go through a process and see what's going on with somebody. Because right now this tells me that here's an exaltation of a placement, but here's a detriment, and this tells me something else about it. So I have a problem because the first time you find that your energy is not in a conducive state, which this is, but this isn't. This is the norm, and this is the abnorm. So here in is a milieu that I can recognize and talk to the person about and eventually ask the right questions over a period of time, and it pulls them out. And you can literally watch the transform. You can see their faces go. The transformation is marvelous. This is a perfect tool in a way to do this, even if it's false. Because one thing is it removes the objectivity. First of all, what does it say about me? And that's the real fascination. It's not you anymore, it's it. But when you associate, when you bring it in, just like the dream, or, you know, I had a dream last night, man. Yeah, well, can we examine that dream? And when you get into that examination, what happens? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> same thing. So, yeah, good question. I don't see the how it's the same it's thing. Because we've well, seen dreams explored, right? Well, hold on, hold on. Well, one, one second, please. When we explore dreams, we explore them in in their detail, yeah, right? Yeah. And it sounds like what you would be doing is ex taking from the detail and drawing sort of generalizing symbols. True, generalized. And to me, that would make it less yeah, meaningful. Right, inherently. good point. It's dream. It's completely what are you doing? What are you doing? Let's examine this. So I can go in here. So you're agreeing that it's here. make it less meaningful. <clears throat> to begin with, I need to bring it in. I need to bring it down. So we need to write the dream out now, don't we? People are going to sit down, we dream. Oh, we write the dream out. Then we take it through a categorical step, don't we? Well, this is the same thing. You take it through categories and steps. Where we take dreams when we do dream analysis yeah. is to go into the present, like go into the what happened the day before, for example, mm -hmm. and then get into detail, get into the details of a particular problem that manifested during the day. Not in any sense go into any generalizing symbols at all but always dealing with the, with the specific detail and content of experiences that happen in terms of emotions, states of mind, thoughts. I'm going to tell something. you right here, didn't the car just leave the house? Don't we do that here? Yeah. I'm not following you, sir. He used the symbols. In a dream, we, in a dream. we draw a house and the car is just leaving it. Okay. I dreamed that I was got in my car and I left the house. Mm -hmm. There it is, I just said that, didn't I? Yeah, different symbols, so, same so, story, different symbols, yeah. Could, could it be, you want to answer something? Could it be tested if, you know, if we had ten, uh, could you do t have ten different people that have the art do the same person's chart? Would it all turn out the same, or is each chart always different? If they study under me, they'll be able to read the chart, but they're all different. No what about if Lyndon does the chart? Will it be He's got a great system. system. He'll do the same thing. I don't do delineations anymore. Mm. Was what it's technically called. What's the deline delineations uh, where you say yeah, yeah, yeah. born in March? I, I, I stopped that about a decade ago because it's worthless. Okay, what I do now in, in reverse of what Pierre does before I started studying here is have people go into you know a um, guided meditation and we look around, just as Pierre does with daydreaming in his workshops. Okay, and one of the things that I can say in listening to dreams, when I've listened to a person's dreams for a while, even though I may never have set up their chart, I know what's going on here symbolically after a while. Okay, because I begin to see this pattern, whatever it is, in their dreams. Okay, and then if I, if I bother to look at their horoscope, I'll say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it does match up? Yes. Okay. So it, it can give a sort of a general, uh, e but after the fact, you could say. But not specific. Kind of a, right. Not specific, which is one of the reasons why I don't do delineations anymore, why I try to have the person, as Pierre does with the dream workshop, start to explore themselves and use this symbolism as a way to anchor 
those experiences since they're not trained metaphysicians. It's a simple way to say, oh, your significance is not very good, is it? You don't think very well of yourself. Or you're really selfish. Or you're too aggressive. Or, you know, you're conceited. How do you get there? How do you get there? Yeah, how do you know that's the case? When you're dialoguing with them, do you say... They tell you. So they're telling I'm selfish. Yeah. Oh, and then you just classify it. Yeah, that's how I use it, as a system of classification. I go, oh, you know, this is how this system, you know, shows me which thing, type of thinking that the person is doing. Because when you listen to their dreams, when you listen to their, you know, what's coming out of them, or watching them, this system for me gives you a mnemonic, oh, I know what's going on. You know, in their soul. It's a lack of significance. It's a lack of feeling nurtured. It's being selfish. You know, that in some way is twisting itself into their life pattern. Because they haven't grasped it and gone somewhere with it. And they don't have any way to change it. Because they have no, nothing to grab onto. It's normal. I'm hitting myself over the head with a hammer and that's normal. Oh, I stop hitting myself over the head with a hammer. That's not normal. I got a kid. You know, yeah. like I don't know what Julie mentioned music, but this sounds the way you're talking now. It sounds like a mnemonic device for all the papalogos. That's correct. Oh, okay. That's so, correct. So, but um, so, you but in midwifery, right? There's no, <clears throat> there's no symbol. He's not putting symbols on states and. No. Symbols on what he's seen. <coughs> so what's the benefit that you see of using, right, that difference and using symbols? Like, like, how's that benefit? There, there is, there isn't really a difference. It is just a way of beginning to identify those states. Back to what he says, or, or I'm sorry, identifying those states. But the persons that I. I Identifying, I'm talking about a midwife talk, basically. Yes. They're identifying already. Mm -hmm. So I'm just wondering, the, the symbols you're using, right, you see, because you see midwife, Pierre do midwifery, right? And there's no yes. symbols. And here you're saying you're doing a similar thing, but using symbols. I'm just wondering, why use the symbols? It's just another way of looking at it. Like he was pointing out, whether we want to use the word love or the symbol for Venus, what do you want to use? So you're just categorizing, like, no, this, no, this state's going under though. this symbol and such. It's like different you know. than using the word love and, and exploring the, what is love. You cannot explore anything with those symbols. It's like mathematical reduction. That's an assumption. Sorry. I'm just telling you that's what I do. I'm not saying, you know, it's right or wrong. I learned this long before I, uh, you know, got to this level of metaphysics, and so, I found. Or, or as, an, as an analogy, you could have uh, somebody, a professor in mathematical physics, who can try, who set, who can come up with a formula that explains the universe, and he can put it in these symbols, but all it is is Correct. a mathematical formula. He cannot take you on a metaphysical journey. You, no. you can't explore. That, All it is is just symbolic, just a way of stringing together symbols. Correct. Uh, that it's just a thought that to to come method. up with a result. Yeah, it's just a thought method. Right. Like I say, I learned it, and you know, it worked for me all of my life, and still does. I just come at it from a different point of view now than I used to. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right.